Another type of aquatic life zone is freshwater aquatic life zones. These aquatic life zones have both standing bodies of water, such as lakes, ponds, and inland wetlands, or flowing systems known as streams or rivers. Two definitions to know include the word runoff. Runoff is water that flows into surface waters from the adjacent land areas. Surface water is fresh water that flows on or is stored in bodies of water on the surface. In other words, streams, lakes, rivers, ponds, and inland wetlands. Also, the definition of a watershed is on the screen in front of you. It is a geographic area that's drained by the stream and its tributaries. The land area supplies the runoff, sediments, nutrients, and dissolved substances to the freshwater systems. We need to protect our lakes, rivers, streams from pollution. A primary example of this is the Rhine River in Europe that once supported more than 150 different species of fish. Today, only about 15 species of fish remain in this river because of pollution from factories, towns, and sewage treatment plants. The previous slide had the definition of the watershed. On this slide, I've depicted the map of the Susquehanna River watershed. As you can see, the Susquehanna River watershed stems all the way up into New York State and through much of Pennsylvania. It's broken into different sections. We in Harrisburg live in the lower Susquehanna section. There's the Juniata River section, the west branch of the Susquehanna River section, the middle Susquehanna section, the upper Susquehanna section, and the Chemung section. This river watershed is over 464 miles long. It's considered to be the longest river on the American East Coast that drains into the Atlantic Ocean. With its watershed, it is the 16th largest river in the United States and the longest river in the continental United States without any kind of commercial boat traffic on it. Part of the reason we don't have commercial boat traffic on the Susquehanna River is because it's so shallow and not navigable. The land use throughout the watershed is industrial, residential, commercial, and agriculture, and there's over 180 tributaries or smaller streams that feed into the different sections of the Susquehanna River, and there's over a population of 4.1 million people that live within the watershed. The Susquehanna River is one of the most flood-prone areas in the entire nation. It experiences a major devastating flood on average every 14 years. The main stem of the Susquehanna River has flooded 14 times since 1810. Of the 1,400 communities in the river basin, about 1,160 have residents who live in flood-prone areas. For these residents, flood warning and flood management and protection are of the utmost concern. The pictures on the screen in front of you are from Hurricane Ivan. The lower left is of the Bloomsburg Fairgrounds along the north branch of the Susquehanna River. You can see how much the river just swells outside of the channel of the river into the adjacent floodplains that have been largely developed along the stretch of the river. The bottom right picture is in 2011 from Tropical Storm Lee. This is a picture of West Harrisburg Pike and the surrounding neighborhoods in the Lower Swatera Township of Pennsylvania, very close to where we are located at Hack Harrisburg. Nutrients and sediment are the two largest contributors to stream impairment in the Susquehanna River Basin and are extremely widespread. Sediment and nutrients have negatively impacted aquatic life and can preclude using water for human consumption. Also, because the river feeds into the Chesapeake Bay, excessive nutrients from the river into the bay can lead to algal blooms in the bay and eventually oxygen depletion, which impacts uh, the various aquatic species in the bay. As mentioned earlier, one example was specific types of mussels as well as blue crabs. Now, in the top left picture is the Conowingo Dam, which is the last dam on the Susquehanna River 
before the river enters the Chesapeake Bay. You can notice in this picture that there is a discoloration behind the dam as opposed to the downriver side of the dam. The dam acts as a best management practice for trapping sediment and not allowing it to continue to flow downriver to the bay. Some of the sediment does get through, but for the most part, a lot of it's trapped behind the dam. Scientists have estimated that within 20 years, the reservoir will reach a steady state, being full, and then there will be more sediment and phosphorus entering the bay by about 2 million pounds per year for sediment and 3.5 million pounds per year for phosphorus. Agencies are studying this issue right now, but because of lack of funding, they haven't been able to address the problem and take action to reduce the sediment transport into the reservoir or remove the sediment already existing behind the dam, as that's one of the options they're considering. The lower left picture is Susquehanna River, a sediment plume that resulted from Tropical Storm Lee and Hurricane Irene in 2011. This is a satellite view of the Susquehanna River near Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and it shows the high levels of sediment that are being carried towards the Chesapeake Bay. And on the right side of your screen is a picture of Cedar Run in Cumberland County, Pennsylvania, and all this greenery indicates that there are excessive nutrients in this water, which is creating algal blooms as well as uh, a lot of algal mats and duckweed being present in this waterway. Acid mine drainage is actually the second largest stream, source of stream impairment in the Susquehanna River Basin and has detrimental impact on aquatic life in the stream. One of the reasons for this is that acid mine drainage decreases the pH and as a result you have a higher acidity and there are problems associated with sulfate and metals such as iron, manganese, and aluminum in addition to sedimentation. In the top left corner is a diagram depicting how acid mine drainage occurs. Basically you have an old abandoned open mine and groundwater seeps into the mine. The mine um, provides an oxygen rich environment where water comes in contact with pyrite which is associated a mineral associated with coal and the water the oxygen and pyrite react to create a hydro um, a sulfuric acid and that in turn dissolves metals from the rocks this water drains out of the mine and goes into nearby streams and the dissolved metals react with oxygen and fall out of solution into the stream water and they turn it a bright orange color. Much of it is also iron. The aquatic animals and plants are killed because the acid mine drainage has a lower pH representing a higher acidity and the metals also impact the aquatic life. The two pictures on the screen represent acid mine drainage in two tributaries to the Susquehanna River. Notice the bright discoloration of the sediment and water with the bright orangish look. There are almost 2,000 stream miles affected by acid mine drainage in the Susquehanna River Basin. This is more than the total number of stream miles in Rhode Island. Most of the affected areas occur in the west branch of the Susquehanna River and the Tioga River watersheds in Bedford and Huntington counties. This is an anthracite coal region around Scranton and Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. The cost for remediation and cleanup of acid mine drainage in the west branch of the Susquehanna River may be as high as $453 million that's been estimated. Pennsylvania spends millions of dollars each year on acid mine drainage remediation projects. The full cost to restore the basin is estimated at $15 billion. Since the Surface, Surface Mine Control and Reclamation Act was passed in 1977, it's estimated that Pennsylvania and the federal government has invested over $600 million in restoring streams and abandoned mine lands. With these funds, over 17,000 acres of acid mine, abandoned mine lands have been restored. Over 125 miles of dangerous high walls have been removed from abandoned coal mines, surface mines. 
Over 900 mine openings have been sealed and over 125 miles of streams have been restored. Obviously, there's more stream miles to be restored since we almost have 2,000 stream miles that are impacted by acid mine drainage and there's more funding needed to reach this goal of cleaning up the basin's legacy of improper coal mining. Pennsylvania's commitment to abandoned mine land and acid mine drainage restoration and cleanup remains dedicated and little by little they're making attempts to make a difference. This is a picture of a successful project that was implemented in 2008 by the Susquehanna River Basin Commission and the Indiana County Conservation District. They actually received uh, an award for for the Watershed Renaissance Grant from Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection to do this restoration. The funds were used to restore past mining impacts to Bear Run, a small tributary to the headwaters of the West Branch of Susquehanna River in Indiana County. Eight separate construction phases were completed to and combined with mine land reclamation as well, removing of coal refuse and treatment of acid mine drainage stream channels. As of late 2010, four of the eight phases were completed. The complete phases have already improved Bear Run drastically, both in terms of aesthetics and water quality. And as you can see in the screen, the picture on the left was pre restoration efforts and the picture on the right is post restoration efforts and you can see that the uh, the um, precipitation of metals into the base of the stream is gone and that the water quality uh, has improved. So some future challenges for the Susquehanna River Basin uh, is posed by the natural gas drilling that's going on in the Marcellus Shale Formation that covers about three-fourths of the state of Pennsylvania. The Marcellus Shale drilling in Pennsylvania requires about 9.6 million gallons of water per well during the drilling and fracking process and there's great potential to over extract the water resources and degrade the groundwater and surface water quality in Pennsylvania as a result of this large consumption of water per well. On the map in front of you is depicted the various wells that have been drilled since 2004 in Pennsylvania. It appears that there's been over 9,000 unconventional wells drilled. And when we say unconventional, it means that they're drilling down vertically into the subsurface about 3,000 feet and then drilling horizontally from that point over another 1,000 to 2,000 feet. They then frack the well by forcing pressurized water down into the well to break open the rock in order for the rock to release the gas. That's unconventional well drilling. So over 9,000 un unconventional wells have been drilled since 2004 and each of these wells can use up to 9.6 million gallons of water. The water has to come from somewhere and it's usually the groundwater system, a nearby stream, or even potentially the Susquehanna River. In 2012, Pennsylvania residents pro protested the approved water withdrawal of 3 million gallons of water per day from the river to use in a fracking project for drilling for natural gas. Protesters agree that fracking causes groundwater pollution and can contribute to climate change. If you look at the figure again, you'll notice that 2010-2011 was a well drilling boom in Pennsylvania in addition to 2012-2013. More current data regarding these wells can be found at the Pennsylvania DEP website or by looking up the website that's indicated here at the bottom. This rise in gas extraction in Pennsylvania, especially in the year 2011 and 2012, made Pennsylvania the fastest growing U.S. producer of natural gas, and the increase of fracking throughout the country put the U.S. on track to become the world's largest energy producer as a result of natural gas extraction. So we definitely have a natural gas extraction boom going on in the United States.